Welcome to this week's edition of A Closer Look. I'm Mark Shine with my good friend Mark Miller. Week four is in the books, and we've already got the poll out with the computer numbers in it. <laughs> yeah, a little early a little on that, early, but it yeah. gives them something to talk about. I, I don't look at it until after week seven. I think yeah. about week seven, you kind of get an idea with yeah. three weeks left. Who's, yeah. What's going on with all that? Okay, well, we have six games to review because we had some mm-hmm. great football games last week. And, Mark, you're going to go first. All right, a bevy of overtime games. I've got one. Spencerville 27, Allen East 20. Spencerville was up 20-13 to 13 with 43 seconds left. Allen East freshman quarterback Tyler Klum threw a pass to Braden Crumrine, a six-yard TD pass. The PAT ties it at 20. Overtime, Spencerville's Kanan Johnson, one-yard touchdown run. The PAT made it 27-20, and then the Spencerville defense held on for the win. Johnson had 123 yards with three touchdowns. Allen East Klum, 6 of 11, 133, and three touchdown passes. Spencerville, 2-2, two 1-0. Two, in the Northwest Conference, Allen East 1-3, 0-1. Oh Let's move on to Shawnee and St. Mary's, another overtime game. Shawnee come in at 0-1 oh in conference play, 2-1 overall. St. Mary's was also 2-1, but they had a win over Van Wert. St. Mary's never led in regulation. Score tied late in the game. Grant Wheeler scored for Shawnee, 46-yard touchdown run. That put Shawnee up 7. St. Mary's and Tyler Schlosser answered with 129 left. That sends it to overtime. Shannon Fowler scores a one-yard touchdown run for St. Mary's. That puts them up seven with the PAT. And then Shawnee's Johnny Caprella. What a great game he had. He scored from five yards out. It's 35-34 St. Mary's. Shawnee elects to go for two. Caprella gets stopped on the one-yard line. What a great game Johnny had. 17-22. Touchdown. 128 yards throwing it. He rushed for 154. And, Mark, I'm all with Coach on that one. When he said afterwards, you know what, my guys were tired. Coaches get paid to know their game, know their guys. He went for two because he thought it gave his team a best chance to win. It didn't work out. Congratulations to both teams and Shawnee and St. Mary's. Uh, move on to WBL play this week. All right, I've got an overtime game, but it was three overtimes. Delphi St. John's 24, Versailles 21. It was 14-14 to 14 after regulation. Delphi St. John's missed a field goal that would have won it in the first overtime. In the second overtime, both teams scored and they both hit their PAT. So on we go to the third overtime. DSJ stopped for sales. Then the kicker got a second chance. How about that second yeah, chance? Yeah. Mark Rossman hit a 35-yard field goal to win it for Delphi uh, St. John's. Jared Wurst had 148 yards passing, had a touchdown. Isaac Musser had 92 yards rushing. Hey, Versailles running back Curtis Richling had a nice game, 138 yards, one touchdown. DSJ, 3-1, and 1-1 one. One and one in that MAC conference. Versailles drops to 1-3, and 0-2. Oh Pandora Gilbo, what a good year the Rockets are having. We're going to feature them a little bit later on in our preview game as well. But they came into the game with North Baltimore at 3-0 and oh in conference play. North Baltimore was 2-1, and one, and PG hung 74 points on North Baltimore. They had 50 to 18 lead at halftime. They stretched it out in the second half. They had 11 touchdowns, 578 yards of total offense. They wow. kept the scoreboard guy busy that night. Jared Brees, a great game, as he had so often this year for them. PG will come back to them later on. They are now 4 0 in, in, in play this year. Anytime somebody scores 74, you've got to review we it. We've got to put them in there, don't we? I, this is not an overtime game, but a, a close one. Ada, 35. Delphus Jefferson, 33. This was 35-21 in the fourth quarter, Ada ahead. Jefferson scored two touchdowns to come within two points, but the two-point conversion failed. And hence the 35-33 final. Ada's quarterback, Seth Conley, 265 yards passing, four touchdowns. Chase Sumner, you've heard both those names a lot, 11 catches, 139 and a couple of touchdowns. Jefferson had 318 yards rushing including Darius Sherrell's had 104 with three touchdowns. Eight is three and one, one and oh in the league. Jefferson, two, two, oh, one. Liberty Benton goes to Van Buren, and big BBC matchup. Both teams, one and oh in conference play, two and one overall. Our next segment is going to be about stat stuffers, and I want to stick Liberty Benton's defense in the entire 11 man unit in stat stuffers because Van Buren rushed the ball for 27 times for a grand total of 21 yards. They were 5 of 14 with an interception through the air, was Van Buren, for 16 yards. Liberty Benton shut out Van Buren, holding them to just 37 total yards. Uh, Van Buren had one first down in the second quarter. That was the only first down they had until very late in the ballgame. Austin May, another great game at quarterback. The negative for Liberty Benton, tailback John Sadler appears to have broken his collarbone pending examination this week. All right. 
Stat stuffer time. Stat stuffers. We've talked about Isaac McAdams from Elida. It's usually for the number of passes he completes and how many yards and touchdowns he throws. This week we're going to talk about him running the ball. He ran the ball 24 times for 235 yards. Got two touchdowns in their win over Defiance. Looking forward to seeing him this week. That's yep. our game that we get to telecast this week when they go down to Wapak. Looking forward to that. Brennan Hour from Delphus St. John's, or Del excuse me, Delphus Jefferson. Uh, 24 carries, 218 yards. His team trails uh, by, by 14 in the fourth quarter. He has two touchdowns, one a catch, one a run uh, to get the game back. Their PAT failed, and Jefferson loses uh, to a game that, that week. Uh, but he yeah, had a great game anyway by Brendan Auer. Ryan Bruning from St. Henry. Listen to this. He scored a lot of different ways. He had an interception for a touchdown. He caught a pass for a touchdown. And he kicked five PATs as they beat Parkway. Anytime you can score three different ways, you deserve to you be a You deserve to be on And Wade Sheets from Crestview. This is a game that Mark and I got to see last week. Crestview goes to Bluffton. Had a great game, did uh, the Crestview Knights. Wade Sheets, four catches, 113 yards, and one TD. Picked off three passes all by himself, three INTs. His team led 33 to nothing before. Both teams kind of brought their bench players in. And Crestview defeats Bluffton 40 to 20. My last stat stuffer is a college guy, a local college guy, Colby Spies, the quarterback for Bluffton University out of Wayne Trace High School. Listen to this, 23 of 43 for 431 yards passing. He ran the ball 20 times for 96 more yards and a touchdown. His Bluffton Beavers 32, Mount St. Joe 31. That's for one of our legends the last right. couple of years. Colby Spies having a nice year for the Beavers. All right. Now, you've also been coming up with a football fun fact for us this week. They're fun for me. They're fun anyway, and I like them as well. So let's look at our football fun fact for this week. Hey, this week we're going to look at the NFL winning percentage for coaches. And their top, I don't know if you would have guessed this. I'm not sure I would have. But John Madden from the Raiders, 759. He won 103 games. Second on the list. I would have guessed this one yes. at some point in there. Of course, Vince... Uh, Lombardi coached for the Packers and finished with the Redskins at 739. He won 96 games. You, you think of Vince yeah. Lombardi, he won a zillion games. No, just 96. Didn't coach a long, long time. George Allen with the Redskins and Rams. He also was a coach of the Rams at 712. Jim Harbaugh would fit in there next with a 695, but he only coached four seasons, so he didn't really qualify on this list. Blanton Collier. How many people would have ever guess, guessed Blanton right. Collier? you got to be a Browns fan and remember <laughs> Jimmy Brown and Ernie Green yep. and all those guys. And then George Hallis, the Papa Bear, 600 or 682, but he won 318 games, but he's not tops on the list. The tops is Don Shula finished his career with 328 wins. Percentage-wise would have been number six. We cut it off at the top five, but those are the winningest coaches by percentage in the history of the NFL. So the NFL Super Bowl champion gets the Vince Lombardi trophy, yep. and he only won 95 games. The thing about that, that's right. I mean, that's 96. That's you're right. Yeah. You're right. He's not even in, uh, close with the number of victories. Yeah. But the thing about Vince is he was the head coach with the Packers for five years or seven years. He won five championships. Five championships. That's, pretty, that's pretty good. Pretty good. Yeah. That's pretty good. Yeah. All right. Well, let's move into our Where Are They Now segment this particular week. And this week, we're going to bring up a quarterback this week in our Where Are They Now segment. And. <laughs> Our quarterback <laughs> this week is one Mark Miller. Oh, okay. All right. From I got Canton you last South. year in basketball, you so you're did. paying From me Canton back. From Canton South. Now, you football, basketball, and baseball <laughs> for the legendary oh, Red Ash. You always have to put Red legendary Ash. in yeah. there, right? Yeah. Okay. And you told me you threw 100 total passes your senior year and still got a scholarship. Yeah. And now we got guys throwing that many in three weeks. That's about yeah, right. Or two and a half Maybe weeks. Two games, right. yeah. Off to Bowling Green State University. Started for four years, okay? When you graduated, and you did graduate, because I found that out here too, single season record completions, career pass attempts, completions, TD passes, passing yards. You were academic all Mac. Who do you talk to around I here? Mostly she did off my wife. Ben still thinks that Xavier starts with a Z. <laughs> My grade point average looks like a, a National League pitcher's batting average. I mean, and you, all right, and guess what's, what's game film from, what is it, Central Michigan? Oh, yeah, it is. I think this is Central Michigan. You're the quarterback in How this. In the world did you guys find this? Thanks to the lovely Barb Miller uh, and okay. Kyle. Oh, yeah. you know what? Okay, now it's all making now sense. Now it's making sense. Why in the world, out of the clear blue, she asked me, what tape do you have on the CD? All right, the then, NCAA postgraduate scholarship drafted in the third round by the Cleveland Browns, two years in Cleveland. One year in Green Bay, three years with the Michigan Panthers, and then you begin your coaching career back at BGSU in 83, which is the same year you went into the Falcon Hall of Fame there. Coached till 89, became the, uh, the color commentator on BGSU radio after that. 
married to the lovely Barb Miller. Best thing I ever did. There you go. Yeah. Zach and his uh, wife Jill have three of your grandchildren. Zoe is six and a half. Jack's three and a half. Macy's one and a half. Adam and Grace, they have Leah, who's two and a half. Titus, who's one. Kyle and Chelsea, they have Luke, who's three and a half. Brady, who's one. You've been a longtime FCA board member, mm -hmm. still on the athletic board up at, at uh, BGS. Yeah. You do a lot of work up there yeah. with them. Currently, the, uh, what is it, business manager, facility yeah. safety guy at... Currently uh, wondering where Liam Nodler is, because that's who we we're going <laughs> to talk about well, today. Well, Liam, you're going to have to wait till oh, next week to do next this. Next week for Liam Nodler. Next, right, next, next week gets to be Liam Nadler. All right. My good friend, and you started here with WTLW in mm. 1990. That's about right. Maybe and one, maybe, and yeah. we think there's video somewhere. You were doing a pregame interview with Mike Shep. Yeah. and got whacked in the head with a basketball <laughs> during the pregame yeah. interview. Yeah. The guys spent a lot of time back uh -huh. there looking for it and, and couldn't come up well, with it. Well, that's good, because that was pretty embarrassing. <laughs> that was, anyway. <laughs> Thank you, my good friend. Uh, all right. And my good friend for close to 30 years yeah. now. Yeah. We're and partners. Still carry me. Appreciate right, that, man. All right. Let's move on. Our bright spot this week, we had some national anthem pictures we were going to show you, but due to time constraints, yeah. we're going to move on. We appreciate all you guys out there taking our serious on the national anthem. We've got college players to look at. Hey, we like to update them because we love to see our, college, our high school guys in the area go on and play in college, and we have a bunch of them. We're going to scroll them down through there, and we're going to highlight a few, but please take a look. 95 total players from our viewing area playing in college. I just think that is awesome. You're going to start off with Matt at, yeah. at Ashland. We got Matt Wilcox at Ashland. He was a swimmer as well as a quarterback mm -hmm. uh, when he was at Ada. Now, of course, he throws the ball uh, for, or he plays wide receiver, I should say, for Ashland. Michael Rob Robertson also from uh, Ada. He's having a great career at Bluff. That's some record setting years last year. Yeah. And Plummy Gardner, who is now a, a quarterback at Perry, is now a wide out along with Lamonte Nichols at Bluffton as well. Matt Wanamaker, a freshman defensive lineman at Bluffton, he's from Lincoln View. I find that interesting because they yeah. don't even have football. Yeah, that's right. have I football. think that's awesome. Name another Lincoln View kid that went on and had a great college career at Ohio Northern. Right. I think he made All-American on a tackle. He's on that uh, state championship basketball team, Chad Pollock, Chad the big Pollock. guy inside. That's right. Another guy we want to talk about for just a second is Joe Davidson at Bowling Green. He's a senior punter from Findlay, academic All-American on the Ray Guy watch list. This guy is the real deal. I get to see him play a lot. He can do everything. He can corner kick. He can pooch it. He can boom it. He can uh, directional kick. He is one of the best punters in the country. And he will play on Sunday next he year. Will. Yes, he, he will. Yes, he will. As we go through our list a little bit, Adam Burke, is at Finley. Adam started at Pitt and has transferred to Finley. He's a quarterback there now on their roster. I want to mention Matt Barr from Kenton. He's a junior DB at Kent, and he is doing a great job. How about Kenton to Kent? Just whacked yeah. off a couple of letters, and that's his college. <laughs> uh, he's one of our legends that comes every summer and helps in our camp, and what a good player he is. Glad to see Darius West from Lima Central Catholic back on the field at Kentucky. Had that serious leg injury. It's kept him out for a couple years. Glad to see him back playing as well. Clark Etzler from Elida is a junior wide receiver at Mount Union, but has made his way even more so in track. NCAA track national champion on a relay. All right. Oh, got, I guess I got yeah, I keep got going. Yeah. That's right. Ohio Northern. Look, there's three Wapak guys on Ohio Northern's roster, and they are all good players. Kyle Gonerman is a lineman. Will Rankin is the center. And Zach Schmergy, he's an All-American linebacker. Wapak has done very well for for the Ohio Northern well, uh, Polar Bears football team. Also, there are Christian Williams from Anna. He's a great running back at a great year a year, uh, game a year ago. And lastly, on the final page, we're just going to mention Tristan Edwards uh, uh, from Elida. Also, he's a sophomore center. He has started. This is his second year. He started last year because of an injury, and he is the guy this year. So congratulations to all those guys that are playing. We love to see our guys go on and continue playing Absolutely. so we get to follow them. And, and thank you for putting that list together. That's, a, that's fun. That's a fun thing there. to do. There you go. Well, we're running short on time, so we're going to get to our preview games very quickly here. And, Mark, you have Elida Wapak first. I do. 4-0, 2-0 for Elida. They're going down to Wapak. The defending champs had a tough first couple of weeks, but they've won a couple of good ones in a row now. Wapak gets behind in games on their losses they've gotten behind, even in their wins. They were down 7-0 to Shawnee and down three touchdowns to Kenton before they won. On the, uh, on the other side, Elida is 45-0 in the first quarter, so they get off to a fast start. Wapak has not yet. That'll be a key in the game that you and I are going to do. 
McAdams to Unruh and Harmon, that's the key for Elida. Okay, let's move on to a BBC matchup, PG and Lipstick, and who would have thought this in the preseason, but both are 4-0, they're both 2-0 in, uh, in games within the conference play. Matt Hershey, first year uh, at PG, returns his quarterback, that's always a good thing, Jared Brees, he's had a great year, he's over 1,000 yards of total offense already between running and throwing the football. Knopfsinger leads the BBC with 27 catches for 333 yards and four scores. Joe Kirkendall, Lipstick, his quarterback a good one. Also, Dylan Schrader, he's over 800 yards, approaching 900 yards in total offense. Lipsick won this game last year, 21-17. This is one of four losses that PG had by four points or less, by six points or less. See if, if the Rockets can get, get the game this year. Big Mac game, St. Henry, 4-0, 2-0. They go to Coldwater, who's 2-2, two 1-1. And two, one and one. Huge game for them. You don't want to drop the second Mac game. St. Henry beat Parkway. Dalen Lang had a couple of touchdown passes. Their defense has given up 15 total points, 3.75 per game. Coldwater got a really good win at Fort Recovery, 33 to 7. Drawing to winning for three touchdowns. That'll be a good one. Yeah, we also have Fort Recovery at Minster this week, and these are two teams. Talk about not wanting to get that second loss. Yeah. They're both one and one in conference play. Fort Recovery has scored 103 points on the year and given up 104 mm. points on the year, so they're dead even there. Minster can score the football, but all, a defense has been their thing. They're giving up eight and a half points a game on the year. One of the things to look for, when Fort Recovery lost to Marion Local, they turned the football over three times. When Minster defeated Dolphin St. John's, they forced the Blue Jays into six turnovers. If That's you want to look at the schedule uh, and how things break up in the MAC, Fort Recovery does not play Anna. That's the game they get to miss, whereas Minster's game they get to miss is Parkway. So, and tough schedule coming up. How about this if you're Minster? You're going to end up at St. Henry, at Coldwater, and Week 10 is at Anna. So really some tough games tough coming up for Minster. Uh, Fort Recovery still has Mary Local away and St. Henry left as well. Well, let's jump to our broadcast schedule really quickly. You can see a little bit of volleyball action this week. Fields of Faith coming on. That's actually Wednesday night marked down mm -hmm. at Wapak, yep. and we'll air on Thursday night here. That's a great event that we've both been a part of in the past. Cold, cold water sand, volleyball, how about that? There's our football schedule coming up. We're running out of time. We've already put Michelle Wasik, who schedules everything out here over the break. We appreciate you watching and first look this week, and we'll see you next week.